In this video, I'm going to take you through the mechanism of action of atomoxetine and then talk about some dosing strategies and of course pharmacokinetics. Now atomoxetine was initially developed to be an antidepressant. However, it really didn't succeed as an antidepressant, but has moved on to show benefits in the treatment of ADHD, particularly when stimulants aren't tolerated or when there are side effects such as ticks. Atomoxetine is a selective noradrenaline reuptake inhibitor, or NARI, N-A-R-I, which means that it inhibits the noradrenergic transporter and therefore increases levels of noradrenaline in the synaptic cleft. We know that in the prefrontal cortex, we don't have significant DATs, which are dopamine transporters. So NATs, the noradrenergic transporters, do the function of taking up dopamine into the presynaptic neuron as well. Hence, when atomoxetine is prescribed and it blocks NAT, you see in the prefrontal cortex, when NAT is blocked, both noradrenaline and dopamine is increased. And of course, in ADHD, when that happens, it will act on the alpha 2A postsynaptic receptors and the D1 receptors, providing benefits for cognition, attention, impulse control. In terms of metabolism, atomoxetine is predominantly metabolized by CYP2D6. So it's important, of course, if there are CYP2D6 inducers or inhibitors, that dose adjustments may need to be made. Total daily doses are given at 40 milligrams and increased after a minimum of three days to a total daily target dose of approximately 80 milligrams. Now this can either be given as a single daily dose in the morning or as divided doses between morning and late afternoon, or early evening. Generally, I would avoid giving it too late in the evening or just before bedtime because it can significantly affect sleep because it's an activating agent. Now after approximately four weeks, if further increases are required, then one can increase it to a maximum of 100 milligrams in patients who have not achieved an optimal response. The duration of atomoxetine is 24 hours. So some of the indications for atomoxetine include the need for 24 hour symptom coverage. When patients have tics or comorbid anxiety symptoms that are worsened with stimulants where resistance and side effects occur with stimulant medications, including worsening of sleep. One can prescribe atomoxetine because it's that slightly less activating compared to say methylphenidate or dexamphetamine. If there's concurrent substance misuse disorder, then one may need to avoid stimulants and prescribe atomoxetine instead. If there's comorbid enuresis, atomoxetine can provide some benefits as well. So what are the side effects and what do we need to monitor? We should look out for dry mouth, insomnia, nausea and vomiting, decreased appetite and irritability. In children and adolescents, it is important to monitor for treatment emergent suicidal ideation or behavior. Now having said that, atomoxetine when compared to stimulants was not significantly associated with an increased risk of suicidal events in literature. However, it's important that we should always monitor this when starting off an activating agent such as atomoxetine in children and adolescents.